Hey, in this lesson, we're going to take a look at the first song I heard by somebody that turned out to be, that developed into one of my all-time favorite singers, songwriters, storytellers, and unfortunately another tragic story in the, uh, in the world of music, lost Harry Chapin way too early, um, car accident. But he managed to put out about 10 albums worth of incredible songs. Some were kind of big hits, uh, well, only a couple, handful of hits, of course, Cats in the Cradle. And this one that came out in 1972, this is Taxi from his first album, <clears throat> Heads and Tails. Back when albums had really cool stuff in them. I mean, they were, they were works of art. You know, it opened it up with all kinds of cool pictures. You'd have booklets on the inside that would talk about, that would show you, like, the words and, and the family history and stuff. Got this cool picture of Harry in his fictional story of, uh, of driving a taxi in San Francisco. Part fiction, you know. Lyrics to everything. Anyway, those are the days, folks. So, um, anyway, this uh, is a fascinating song. It's a long, mo most of Harry's songs are very long and many of them have multiple parts that are, that turn them into these epics. This is a six or seven minute song and uh, managed to get some airplay even though uh, Elektra Records said, it'll never work, it'll never work. But it worked. Just like uh, Don McLean pulled it off, Led Zeppelin pulled it off. Anyway, Chambers Brothers almost, 1968. Anyway, um, we are going to take a look at how you can play a solo version of this, not, not working on any solos, but just all of the little parts, because Harry usually when he played this had, had his supporting cast, bass player, keyboard, and a uh, cello player, frequently, and, um, the, uh, and then he sang the song. Now some unusual things happen in this tune, in the studio, that he never really reproduced on stage, as far as I can tell, and it's certainly difficult because what happens is the first couple of verses are done in the key of C, or revolving around a C chord, C to G minor kind of thing. And then it modulates into the key of D, but the way he played the parts in the key of C were by opening up with a separate, separate tracks with guitars tuned a whole step low. So again, he never duplicated this live, again, as far as I can tell from everything. And I saw him a couple of times, so uh, lucky, lucky enough to see him at the uh, Circle Star C Circle, uh, Hello, Circle Star Theater <coughs> in San Carlos. In about 1980, just before a sequel came out, maybe 1979, something like that. And um, of course he followed this up, followed this up. The last album of his career had the follow-up song called Sequel, which we may get to someday, but it's, much of it is the same. So, uh, anyway, we're going to talk about how he opened it up, how you can play it in C like you just heard me do. And then do the little modulation. Before it lands in D. And this little lick on D is actually pretty easy. It's just a straight little arpeggio. That we might as well get started on here. Um, but you play your D chord with your second, third, and fing second, third, and fourth fingers because you're going to be needing your first finger to play the C back at the first fret when your third and fourth fingers come off. So you're going to use your thumb on the fourth and third strings, and then your index finger on the second string and your middle finger on the first string. There we go, from the fourth string to the second to the first, back to the second, and now take off your third and fourth fingers. Play the first string, add your first your first finger on C, and then your thumb comes in and hits the A on the third string, and then back to the C. So that's the little eight note phrase that happens as the backing, six measures of this, really contribute to a verse. Now there's also a cool little harmonic part that is done, of course, with a different guitar, or sometimes they, they um, made it, they did some things on the piano that made it sound like it was happening. If you want to try that part, it's very simple. It's a six note pattern that goes from the seventh fret of the second string to the twelfth fret of the first string. Then the same two, then you move one string lower. Third string at the seventh fret, second string at the twelfth fret, then one string lower. Fourth string at the seventh fret, third string at the twelfth fret. And it keeps cycling through in three beat phrases, which puts it out of time with this. Because this is a four beat phrase. Anyway, kind of fascinating little um, uh, sense of confusion and mystery at the beginning of the song, and then they, they sort of faded out with that, with that same thing. So there are a couple things to get you started, but in the rest of this lesson, we will break this thing down into everything that happens with uh, talk about some fancy strumming. 
need to be doing some finger picking, some strumming with the fingers, some unusual rhythms. And some unusual chords. Harry plays some difficult chord shapes. We're not going to use that one, but we will talk about it. We're going to play it like this. Okay, that is what is coming up on my um, dissection and analysis of Harry Chapin's Taxi. <laughs>